Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Our Mox Pearl patron Sean is back for another game. He had a great deck last time and wanted to show us another cool deck he put together. The team loved the idea and let's see how it does tonight. Our patron CEDH Webcam League is over at the end of this month. Our league is played over webcam and is 100% proxy friendly. The winner of this league gets our very last Don't Feed the Fish playmat. Also, our first big in-person Patreon event is super close. We will be meeting up locally, recording games, and looking to have a great time. We have already started sharing all the details with patrons, so be sure to join us at the end of this month. Finally, we have another CEDH tournament on our Discord on August 21st. All patrons are eligible to participate in the tournament. All of these perks are available only through our Patreon, so check the description for the link and sign up today. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Sean piloting Omnath, Locus of the Royal. This is a teamer lands deck that looks to grind value throughout the game and finish with a combo. His opening hand contains a Prismatic Vista, Wooded Foothills, Forbidden Orchard, Carpet of Flowers, Dual Caster Mage, Windfall, and a Breeding Pool. Next, we have Folger piloting the partner pair of Krom, Ludovic Opus, and Ikra Shidiki the Usurper. This is a turbo ad nauseum list that uses its commander to draw cards and stabilize your life total. His opening hand contains a Polluted Delta, Marsh Flats, Breeding Pool, Mana Vault, Chrome Mox, Rushing River, and a Hull Breacher. After that, we have Mike piloting the almost partner pair of Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, and Gigantha the Wellspring as a companion. This is a legendary base mid-range toolbox deck that activates Sisse to find key pieces throughout the game. His opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Burning Catacombs, Badlands, Mox Amber, Opposition Agent, Gamble, and a Teferi Time Raveler. Finally, we have Zack piloting the partner pair of Kodama of the East Tree and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This is a combo deck that performs multiple loops using its commander's abilities. His opening hand contains a Prismatic Vista, Forbidden Orchard, Orboro Palace in the Clouds, Phantasmal Image, Coveted Jewel, and its London Mulligans are Pongify and Eternal Witness. Without further ado, let's begin this babbling, bashful, bitter, bonkers, brazen bonanza. Sean opened the most fetches in his boxes of Modern Horizons 2 and gets to start us off. But Mike has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Gamble. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Breeding Pool, untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mike Sad Altered, Carpet of Flowers. With the Shameless Plug over and Carpet Resolving, Sean passes. Folger draws a card for turn and plays a Breeding Pool, untapped, paying two life. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Rushing River. He casts a Mana Vault. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand to make a red. Folger casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic Sopus. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Krom. Mike takes a hit and Folger passes. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts a Mox Amber. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. Krom triggers and Folger draws a card. Dockside enters and Mike creates three treasures. He casts a Teferi, Time Rattler. He activates Teferi's second ability and bounces Krom to Folger's hand, drawing a card. Mike ends his turn. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Snow-Covered Forest onto the battlefield. He casts an Allosaurus Shepherd and passes. Sean draws and in his first main phase, he makes a blue through his carpet. He plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Saloon Division. He looks at the top six cards of his library and reveals a deflecting swat, putting it into his hand. He ships the turn. During his draw step, Folger takes a damage from his mana vault. He plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He weeps as he casts a main phase Hull Breacher and ends the turn. Now before everyone goes rushing to the comments and talking about how Hull Breacher is banned, this game was recorded before the announcement of the Hull Breacher ban. Anyway, back to the game. Mike draws and activates Teferi's first ability. He plays a Badlands, holds open mana, and passes the turn. Zack draws and plays an Oboro, Palace in the Clouds. He casts a Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist. Zack creates four treasures. He casts a Rhystic Study and passes. Sean draws and makes a blue mana through carpet. He plays a Tropical Island and then casts his commander, Omnath, Locust of the Royal. It enters and deals one damage to Teferi. Sean ends his turn. During his draw step, Folger takes a damage from his mana vault. He plays a Marsh Flats and moves to combat. He attacks Teferi with Hull Breacher. Mike chump blocks with Dockside and Folger passes to Mike. 
At the end of Folger's turn, Mike flashes in an opposition agent. In response, Folger cracks Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a watery grave, tapped. Opposition agent resolves, and the turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and activates Teferi's first ability. He plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. He ends the turn. Sack draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts a very sad Sylvan Library and ships the turn to Sean. Sean draws and also plays a Forbidden Orchard. Omnath triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He moves to combat and attacks Teferi with Omnath. Before blockers are declared, Mike casts a Demonic Tutor through Teferi's first ability. He fetches up a card into his hand. He then casts Deadly Rollick for its alternate cost, exiling Omnath. In his second main phase, Sean adds two blue through his carpet. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit to recast Omnath. Omnath enters and deals one damage to Teferi. He passes to Folger. During his draw step, Folger takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Overgrown Tomb into play Untapped, paying two life. He recasts Krom. He moves to combat and attacks Teferi with Krom. Teferi takes the hit and finally dies. Folger ends his turn. Mike draws and casts a Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. He pays three and puts Jugantha the Wellspring into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Folger with Op Agent and Sisse. Folger takes it and Mike ends his turn. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. Zack looks at Hull Breacher menacingly, does nothing else, and passes. Sean draws and plays a Command Tower. Omnath triggers and gets a counter. He moves to combat and attacks Folger with Omnath. Folger takes the hit and Sean ends his turn. During his draw step, Folger takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Polluted Delta and casts his other commander, Ikra Shadiki the Usurper. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Hullbreacher and Krom. Mike takes it, Ikra triggers, and Folger gains 6 life. Folger ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Sean with Op Agent and Lavinia. Sean takes it and Mike passes. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. He plays a Polluted Delta. He passes to Sean. Sean draws and plays the Yavamaya Coast. Omnath triggers and gets a counter. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Omnath. Mike takes a hit and Sean ends his turn. During his draw step, Folger takes a damage from Mana Vault. He plays a Scalding Tarn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Krom and Ikra and Sean with Hullbreacher. They both take the hit, Ikra triggers, and Folger gains 13 life. In his second main phase, he casts an Arcane Signet. He ships the turn to Mike. At the end of Folger's turn, Mike activates Sisse. He fetches up a Najila the Blade Blossom onto the battlefield. Mike draws and activates Sisse. He fetches up a Derevi, Imperial Tactician, onto the battlefield. Derevi triggers and Mike untaps his Gemstone Caverns. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with everything, attempting to win the game with Najila. Najila triggers and Mike creates a Warrior token tapped in attacking Sean. Before blockers are declared, Sean taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit. He flashes in a Dual Caster Mage to save the table. In honor of his good deed, Zack taps his own Forbidden Orchard to give Sean a spirit of his own for blockers. Sean then blocks Najila with Dualcaster and the Warrior with his Spirit. Najila, Dualcaster Mage, and both tokens die, and Sean takes the rest. Derevi triggers three times, and Mike untaps Sisse, Underground Sea, and Lavinia. With some creative interaction and his win attempt thwarted, Mike passes to Zack. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. He plays a Rejuvenating Springs. In an emerging theme for this episode, he does nothing else and passes the turn. Sean draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. Omnath triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. He contemplates attacks, but decides to hold back. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Folger pays to untap his Mana Vault. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Krom and Sean with Ikra. They both take it, Ikra triggers, and Folger gains 11 life. In his second main phase, Folger casts Oko, Thief of Crowns. He activates Oko's second ability, targeting Sisse. Sisse gets Elked, and Folger ships the turn. Mike draws and casts Gigantha, the Wellspring. He moves to combat and attacks Folger with Lavinia and Oko with his Elk, Derevi, and Op Agent. Folger declares no blocks, Oko dies, and Folger takes the hit. Derevi triggers and Mike untaps his Elk. In his second main phase, he plays a Wooded Foothills. He passes to Zack. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. With the entire table rooting for him to get back into the game, he passes. Sean draws, takes no game actions, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Folger pays to untap his Mana Ball. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Krom. Mike takes it, Ikra triggers, and Folger gains 4 life. Folger then ships the turn to Mike. At the end of Folger's turn, Mike cracks Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Mike draws and moves the combat. He attacks Folger with Derevi and his Elk. Folger takes it, and Derevi triggers 2 times. Mike untaps Derevi and his Elk. In his second main phase, Mike casts Aristic Study. He ends the turn. 
During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. Zack does nothing else and passes the turn. Sean draws and casts a Ponder, attempting to do anything to change the current flow of the game. He looks at the top three and rearranges. Then Folger creates a treasure through Hall Breacher. Sean passes. Folger draws and moves the combat. He attacks Mike with Krom. Mike chump blocks with Derevi. Derevi dies and Folger ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Tundra. He casts a Mystic Remora, but holds priority. He casts Swansong, targeting Mystic Remora, attempting to create a flying blocker for Krom. Krom triggers and Folger draws a card. In response, Folger hard casts Mental Misstep, targeting Swansong. Swansong gets countered and Remora resolves. Mike moves to combat and attacks Folger with everything. Folger blocks Gigantha with Ikra and takes the rest. Mike passes. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He passes to Sean. Sean draws, takes no game actions, and ends his turn. Folger draws and moves the combat. He attacks Mike with Krom. Mike, out of options, dies to commander damage. In his second main phase, Folger casts a Lotus Petal. He ships the turn to Zack. At the end of Folger's turn, Zack cracks his Polluted Delta. He pays a life and fetches up a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield tapped. During his draw step, Zack skips his Sylvan Library trigger. Zack draws and plays a City of Traitors. He cracks Jeweled Lotus to cast his commander, Kodama of the East Tree. He passes the turn. At the end of Zack's turn, Sean casts Pongify, targeting Hull Breacher. In response, Folger casts Pact of Negation, targeting Pongify. Sean responds by casting Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Pact. Krom triggers and Folger maintains priority. He cracks Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. With a Krom trigger still in the stack, Folger cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield tapped. Still maintaining priority, Folger casts a Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Veil of Summer onto the top of his library. Then Krom's trigger resolves and Folger draws a card. He casts Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer resolves and he draws a card. Swat changes the target of Pack to Swat and Pack Fizzles. Pongify Fizzles because Hull Breacher now has Hexproof. Still during Zack's end step, Sean casts Intuition. He fetches up a Balaged Recovery, Noxious Revival, and a Gilded Drake. Zack then chooses to put the Balaged Recovery into his hand and Noxious Revival and Gilded Drake into the graveyard. Still in Zack's end step, Folger casts Ad Nauseum. Since Veil of Summer had resolved earlier this turn, the table doesn't try to fight it. Ad Nauseum resolves and Folger reveals a Demonic Consultation, Jeweled Lotus, Command Tower, Flusterstorm, Gamble, Ristic Study, Time Twister, Teferi, Master of Time, Reign of Filth, Mana Crypt, Snow Covered Island, Vampiric Tutor, Misty Rainforest, Force of Will, City of Brass, Thassa's Oracle, and decides to stop there, putting the revealed cards into his hand. The turn then finally passes to Sean. Sean draws and makes three green mana through his carpet. He casts Balaged Recovery, targeting Gilded Drake. He returns Gilded Drake from his graveyard to his hand. He casts Gilded Drake. Krom triggers and Folger holds priority. He casts a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Krom's trigger resolves and Folger draws a card. Gilded Drake enters and targets Hull Breacher. Hull Breacher and Drake exchange control and then Sean plays a Steam Vents, untapped, paying two life. Omnath triggers, gets a counter, and Sean draws a card. He cracks Prismatic Vista, pays a life, and fetches up a Snow Covered Island onto the battlefield. Omnath triggers again, gets a counter, and Sean draws. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Ramanop Excavator. He casts a Windfall. In response, Folger casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, and targeting Windfall. Force counters Windfall, and Sean follows it up by casting Time Twister. Folger then responds by casting a Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Twister. In response, Zack casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, and targeting Fierce Guardianship. Folger responds by casting Flusterstorm, targeting Twister with every copy. Sean is prepared and casts a Flusterstorm of his own, with each copy targeting one of Folger's Flusterstorms, and the last one targeting Fierce Guardianship. Sean's Flusterstorm resolves, counters most of Folger's Flusterstorms, and Folger's Fierce Guardianship, and then Folger pays for two of Sean's Flusterstorm copies. Now, he has two copies of his Flusterstorm still targeting Time Twister. Folger's Flusterstorm counters Twister, and then Force of Negation fizzles. Sean moves to combat and attacks Folger with Omnath. Folger chump blocks with Gilded Drake, and then Sean ends his turn. During his draw step, Folger takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Command Tower, and then casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand, and then discards a card at random, which is a Mana Crypt. Folger casts Underworld Breach. It resolves, and Folger now has access to all of his protection he spent earlier in the game. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and with a trigger on the stack, he casts Demonic Consultation. Folger names Seedborn Muse and exiles his library. 
Thorkel's trigger resolves, and Folger wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting game tonight. Tonight's game showed what certain silver bullets can do in this format. Teferi, Opposition Agent, and Hull Breacher made the middle of this game a true draw-pass environment. Everyone was just building up their hands slowly while very little back and forth was really taking place. When something finally did happen, everyone had all kinds of answers and simply dumped their hands onto the stack, leaving very little to stop the next player trying to win. Congrats to Folger on his win. He built up his interaction and timed his position very well. His targets and interaction was well chosen and he was rewarded for his skill. The most valuable card goes to Hull Breacher. Due to the recent announcement of the banning of Hull Breacher, we had to do a little bit of a rewrite in this section. Some of you may be saying that Hull Breacher didn't create a ton of treasures, as it usually does in most games. Many times, the value of a card is determined by what it stops more than what it enables. Hull Breacher prevented players from advancing by stopping the ability to go through your deck to find an answer. Opposition Agent and Teferi were close runners up, but it was Hull Breacher that really put the squeeze on its opponents tonight. This, plus the ability to accrue advantage, is a classic example of why this card was banned in the format. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. It is Patreon shoutout time. I'd like to give a shout out to Nitai Rubinovix. Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one. Ivan Thumitarian Descendant, Frapril, Nathan Smith, Elijah Miller, J Rock, Pyro, Dark, Philip Hickey, Brad Tobin, Sanguino Lindsay, Snarps the Klept, Matt Wingrove, Delph Driz, Dante, Jared Smith, Baby Jeebus, Trey Payne, Rakeko, Greg Babe, Zods, Spielrahu, CZ, Nick, and Liam. Thank you all very much for your support.